This is a car that, out of the factory, took 24 seconds at the Nürburgring from the previous generation. Before taking it to the track, you still have your suggestions, your view of what should be done. Please explain to me how different the car is at the moment when you finish than it was the moment it came to, to the shop. So with every new car, there's a, a compromise built in from the factory. You know, there's liability concerns that they engineer into the car because they know they've got to kind of make it work for everybody, the women, the children, the people that are qualified and the people that are not. So is there room for improvement in certain areas? Absolutely. Is there choices that you can make that could potentially be beneficial for one thing, but then a compromise on the street? Absolutely. So our customer is a qualified track driver, has got a bunch of different experience and several different lineage of GT3 vehicles. So the natural progression to have kind of a raise the bar for the starting point for this car is perfect for the solution for him. So what were the, the incremental steps that you want to accomplish? From this point, you know, there's a couple of things that can be defined continuing into the suspension with alignment settings, tire choices, um, you know, and further taking some of the rubber points in the suspension and potentially, or potentially change them to monoball, spherical joints, etc. That could dial it in even a little bit further from what the point is now. You prefer the solution of the KMW suspension which is a more traditional racing solution than the electric impulse of the suspension that, come, that comes in the car. Why? As all these cars have gotten newer, particularly over the past 10 years, you've gotten something to where there's more and more electronics throughout the entire car. So the ability for the driver to be in complete control of the machine is almost impossible. So by having that ability put back in the owner's shoes to have a traditional, fully capable, multi-level motorsports package will allow him to even grow into the car once he gets comfortable with it. Which brings us to the, the, the discussion of the nannies, the electronic mm -hmm. help of the car. How should this car now be driven? With the help of the nannies or without? Like traction control and... There's a certain amount of it that you can't defeat as a driver, owner, occupant. You know, it's just there's a little bit each year is being taken away. It's just that's how it is. But with some of this is going to allow the person at the track to have a little bit more confidence in the machine because they've got control and again, flexibility to their taste. How did you set up the, how did you align the suspension? Toe, camber, Height, right height? Yeah, from where we were before, the car has been lowered just slightly, you know, and that gives you, obviously, it lowers your center of gravity to the car, so it actually helps with um, just total feel throughout the entire experience of driving that car. Um, and then when it comes to camber, you know, obviously all of these things, when they're delivered to the new owner, it's got a very track, or I mean, excuse me, a very street compliant, easy to drive, even tire wear, like any other street car would have. So we've taken it and put a little bit more camber all the way around the car. We've obviously lowered the car a little bit um, and kept very compliant toe settings to this point because it's still gonna be driven on the street. So neutral toe and how much camber? Front and rear? Right in the front is uh, 2.3 and the rear is right around two. So it, we could go a little bit further, I think in the rear with a different tire choice. Um, and some of this is going to be, I think, really up to the owner and driver with some feedback that then we can have a discussion to see like, literally how the tires are wearing and how you're performing. And looks like the factory, well, the factory, no, looks like the tire maker is going towards that direction because now there are the Michelin, Michelin R's, which have a quite different feel of the track for, for what it seems. And the one thing that's really, I think, uh, you know, to talk just in broad strokes on how things have been going with uh, track day cars is, it, you know, you're buying a car that's ready to go. You know, it wasn't that long ago that even like the Caymans that are in the background, you were doing a considerable amount of work to actually make it work for the track. 
nowadays you know, is and nowadays you just go to the dealer and you buy it and you're good finally you made a point of putting the reinforcement on the tower struts why it's purely just a safety concern you know the carbon hood on that car is exceptionally expensive so i'd hate to see a strut blow out and blow through the hood first of all um, it also gives you a little bit of a security factor that if there is a failure it's not a complete catastrophic because if that strut tower fails, the entire wheel carrier, wheel, et cetera, gets shoved up into the front part of the car and potentially could be a catastrophic accident. Now, you, that happened. And it has happened. And the solution is a motorsport solution from Porsche. Yeah, these parts that we installed on the car, you can buy from Porsche Motorsport. We also have a bunch of those that are in stock and regularly sell them. And if you look at like a new GT4 Club Sport, some of those MR products that Manthai makes, that all of that stuff is delivered in those cars. It's a, it, the other part of this is, is you got to keep the car on the track. You know, the ones that are going to be in the dirt, or if you're going to drive around the turtles, you're going to end up potentially shocking those cast components and potentially have that kind of failure. Did I forget to ask anything that you might consider worth pointing out? Yeah, I think we've covered it. You know, we've made a change in the brake pads, you know, to a more, again, traditional track competition endurance pad. Um, and that has been a padded pad that people have made now for several decades at this point and has been kind of a gold standard. So in your car or in this new car, there is a, a padget or a padded street trackish kind of compound that they've come up with that's purely just through the OE Porsche supplier, you go to the dealer and buy it, but it's not the same compound that we put in that um, that's your more traditional, what GT3 in previous generations were actually delivered with.